Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us, how you bless us, how you carry us when we are weak, how you inspire us to inspire others, Lord. Father, we thank you for healing Beatrice, Lord, for sending that angel to tell her what to do to him and heal her completely, Lord. Father God, we pray for the little children who are writing this exam tomorrow, that they will recall what they have learned. We pray for the supervisors, Lord, that they will be calm and they will send out a calming spirit upon the children. And we pray for the environment around that it will be peaceful, Lord. Jesus, please put your healing hand on Sherry's dad, Conrad, and bless him with the healing. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are not with us tonight for one reason or the other. We know that Donna Maria is traveling early in the morning. Give her traveling mercies, Lord. Keep her safe. We know that we heard that uh, Terry Ali is also traveling. Father, bless him in what he is about to do. And thank you for your word tonight. Father, prepare our hearts and our minds to receive your word, Lord. And may your word be embedded in our minds so that when we need to recall your word, it will be right there at our fingertips, Jesus. We ask all of this in your holy and precious name. Amen. 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 Okay, did everybody do your quiz? I'm going to start giving penance, you know. <laughs> but... Um, so let's, I guess we're going to have to do it again, impromptu. That's the way you want to do it, okay? All right, we're doing chapter 8 review because tonight we're doing chapter 9. So why do you think Jesus went up to the Mountain of Olives in chapter 9? Why? In chapter 9 or 8? We well, chapter eight. Sorry, yeah, we're doing a review of chapter eight. Is it because he decided he needed the exercise? He needed a peace and quiet. He liked climbing mountains, or his mother told him to climb the mountain. He needed peace and quiet. He needed peace and quiet, and if he does his example to us. We need to separate ourselves from this world physically and get away quiet. He told us, when you pray, what you should do? Anybody? When you, you pray, what you room, should do? To go when in you, a room. And, by yourself. Stay by and yourself. Go and close the door. Yeah. Door. Yep. yep. Remove all the distractions. True or false? The Pharisees brought the woman and the man caught in adultery to be stoned. False. False. Huh? False. 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 Who did, did they bring the man? No, they brought her. No, woman. they just oh. brought the woman. You know, at that time, it was a male chauvinistic dominated world. Yeah. You probably girls have come a long way. Probably still. Where? <laughs> The Pharisees referred to the law of Moses regarding stoning of the adulterous woman. True or false? True. Yep. Yep. Moses' law. The Pharisees invited Jesus to participate in the stoning of the woman. True or false? False. True or false? False. 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 They asked him for his opinion. They didn't tell him, come join us. Uh -oh. The Pharisees asked Jesus, what would he say about the stoning of the woman? True. True. Yeah, that's what they asked him. Jesus told them that they should do what Moses commanded them to do. No. Nope. Oh, he didn't. Remember, he didn't say anything. He bent down and started with his finger writing on the ground. He ignored them at the beginning. Yep. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus... Oh, somebody, Sharon is coming. Yeah. What did Jesus do when the Pharisees tried to 
to set a trap for him regarding the stoning of the woman. Come on, computer. Okay. He disappeared. He went up into the Mount of Olives. He bent down and wrote on the ground. With his finger. Bend down. Okay. Yep, that's what he did. See, he... Can you imagine the, the frustration of these people? I'm talking to you, I'm asking you a question and you're ignoring me? And you know, they were so full of pride. What did Jesus tell the Pharisees after they continued to question him? If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Yeah, yeah. Yep, that's it. Leave her alone and go home. No, bring the whole man also to be stoned. This is one of this is none of my business. So it's a if any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Number five. How many throw a stone at the woman? Nobody. Is it all of them? No one. Is no it one. only the high priest? No. Is it none of them? Or a of few of them. See, none of them. See, none of them. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What is this? I don't want this. Number six. Who was the first to walk away? Was it the older persons? Older people. Yep, the older people. Why do you think it was the older people? <laughs> More wisdom. Wisdom. They knew the word. <laughs> they knew the word. And they knew the consequences of lying to the Lord. Yeah. What did Jesus ask the woman after her accusers had left? Why did you do this? <laughs> Where is the man who committed adultery with you? Where are they? Have no one condemned you? Are you going yeah. to just stand there? See? See? Where are they? Yeah, where are they? Have no one condemned you? Yeah. Number eight. What did Jesus tell her to do after he pardoned her? Go now and leave your life of sin? Go bathe in the Jordan River. Go to the temple and pray for seven hours or fast from meat for one week. Hey. Go, now. go now and leave your life of sin. Yes, go now and leave your, go and sin no more. Yes. Hey, who is the light of the world? Is it St. Peter? Is it the Apostle John? Is it John the Baptist? Or is it Jesus Christ? Jesus, Jesus, Christ. Christ. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Is, notice the tense, is the light of the world. He's ever present. Number 10, what will happen to people who follow Jesus? They will never walk in darkness. They will be happy. They will be very rich. Or they will never get a light bill. What will happen? <laughs> Maybe yeah. all, they, all will, of them. they will never walk in darkness. Yep. You could be happy. That's a, that's a different type of happiness. Yeah. We're looking for what he said in chapter 8. That's what we're looking for. We're reviewing chapter 8, not the whole Bible right now. Okay? Okay. And I am happy. So very happy. Number 11. <laughs> true or false? The Pharisees accused Jesus of being his own witness. That is true. Yes, they accused him. The testimony of Jesus was invalid. False. 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 Yes. Jesus knew where he came from. True. 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 The law of the Jews stated that the testimony of two were valid. True. True. Yeah. Two true. people. God himself is the second witness of Jesus. 
True or false? True. True, yeah. He said, my father is his witness. What did Jesus tell the Pharisees about knowing him and his father? Is it spend more time with me and you will get to know me? Is it if you knew me, you would know my father also? Is that it? One? Yep. B, they were not worthy of knowing him. It did not matter whether they knew him and his father or not. No, it B. If you knew me, you would know my father. Because you always remind them, my father and I are one. We know the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, three and one. Yeah. Number 13. Why was no one able to seize Jesus? Is it because he was too powerful? His disciples protected him? His time had not yet come? This or they time. were afraid of the crowds? His time had hmm. not Yes, see, his time had not yet come. And we see all this say, mentioned quite a, a time, a few Three times minutes. already. Number 14, what did the Jews have? Why did the Jews have such a hard time understanding Jesus? Is it because they were focused on physical, not spiritual? They were jealous of his popularity? They thought he was demon possessed? Or all of the above? All of the above. All of the above. Yes, correct. Number 15. What will happen to people who keep the word of Jesus? Is it they will never see death? They will receive a golden ring? <laughs> they will get go a golden cross? Or nothing? They will never see death. They, they will, will never, never see thank death. You. They will never see death. Thank you. Thank you. And this is the last question. What did Jesus tell the Jews about his relationship with Abraham? Abraham was his friend? Or Abraham was his brother? Or before Abraham I am? Or Abraham was his grandfather? Before Abraham, before Abraham I am. Before Abraham I am, yes. Okay, that brings us to the end of our review. Study quiz, stop sharing, and welcome, Sharon. How are you feeling? Or uh, on mute, Sharon. Okay, so we have um, we we come to chapter nine. How is everybody doing? Everybody happy? Everybody ready? Yes, sir. Okay, we come to chapter nine. And chapter nine has anybody know how many verses? Sixteen. Forty-one. How many of you 41. read chapter nine before now? I say sixteen is forty-one. Okay, forty-one verses. So there are how many of you here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of you in that six verses each, and the last person will read five verses. So, Jerry, one yes, to sir. six. One to six. That's what I said. Yes. Beatrice, seven to 13. Christy, 14 yes. to 20. Reverend Joseph, 21 yes. to 27. Sharice, yes, 27. 28. 28. <laughs> 34. Arun, do you have your Bible, Arun? Ar Arun, okay. Bible is Huh? Yes. Yes, dad. He has. Okay. That will be 35 to 42. One. 41. 41. Yeah, 41. There are no 42. Thank you, Sharif. You're my secretary tonight. <laughs> <laughs> my, my assistant tonight. Okay. Let's go. So let us listen to the word of the Lord coming from chapter 9 in St. John's Gospel. Jesus heals a man born blind. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? 
this man or his parents that he was born blind. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is day, he must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Silo. This word means scent. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? He answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime time was blind. Now the, now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Shabbat. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes. The man replied, and I washed, and I now see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, how can, how can a sinner do such miraculous things? So they were deli divided. Finally, they turned again to the blind man. What have you to, to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, He is a prophet. The Jews still did not believe the believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until the sent for the man's parents. Is this your son? They asked, is this the one, one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? We know he is our son. The parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how he can see now are opened his eyes. But by what means he now church we know not or who hath opened his eyes we know not he is of age ask him he shall speak for himself these words spake his parents because they feared the Jews for those Jews had agreed already that if any man did con confess that he was Christ he would be put out the put up the sraga. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called the the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, said whether 
he be a sinner or no i know not thing i know that whatever i was blind now i see then said they to him again what did he to this how open he thin eyes he answered them i have told you already and ye did not hear wherever would ye hear it again will ye also he his disciples then they hurled insults at him and said you are this fellow's disciples we are disciples of moses we know that god spoke to moses but as for this fellow we don't even know where he comes from the man answered now that is remarkable you don't know where he comes from yet he opened your my eyes we know that god does not listen to sinners he listens to the godly person who does his will nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind if this man were not from god he could do nothing to this they replied you were steeped in sin at birth how dare you lecture us and they threw him out mm-hmm. arun We're not hearing you. Hey, sound or la? Sound or la? Look like he's having Anxious some problem. technical problems. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll finish it up. Um... Verse 35, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe in the Son of Man, Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I am coming to this world, that they which see not might be, and they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were, which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? <laughs> Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Yep. Very interesting. So we learn in verses 1 to 5 that this man was born blind. Anybody know anybody who was born with a sickness, with an ailment? I had a student. Yeah? Uh-huh. I never knew his name. He came from Takariwa Press. Your sister-in-law asked me to take him. Uh-huh. He was blind from birth. Blind, from, blind from, birth. from birth. Yeah. I I remember growing up, we had a neighbor, and the, yeah. one of their children were born with half of one hand, no feet, and the other hand, his fingers were, like, stuck together. And well... Well, in Sags, we had a student, a young lady, and she is now a, a lawyer in Trinidad. She does not have two arms, even from the shoulder, right? So um, this is not something that a fable or a story, no. but this is reality. That's this, right. This man was born blind. It's reality. Now look at what the decided conclusion that the disciples jumped to. That maybe the reason why he was born blind is because his parents had sinned, or he himself had sinned. But you know, how can he sin before he was even born? So, but that's how most people remember in chapter eight. He said, "You with who is without sin, be the first to cast." We are so judgmental, 
and, and we tend to be judged on the negative instead of the positive. God has a purpose in all things. And Jesus explains to them here. The disciples jumped to the conclusion that his parents had sinned. And most normal people, that's what they would do with this man or whom or his parents had sinned. But we must resist. We who know the word must resist the temptation to judge people who are sick. The first thing okay. comes to mind, well, they must have done something wrong to be, to be sick, you know? But Jesus explains that people's suffering, listen to this, people, people's suffering are opportunities for us who are well to serve and glorify God. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's how, if, if there was no suffering, we wouldn't have, opportunity to show love if there were no people hungry we would not have an opportunity to feed them kindness to be generous so the lord has a purpose a good purpose in all things so um oh i did not give verses beatrice would you read john 11 verse 4 for us um jerry hebrews 13 5 um Charisse, Genesis. Charger. My phone is dying. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Christy. Genesis 2 7. Um, Reverend Joseph. Mark. Mark 5, verse 34. And. Are you back, Sharon? Sharon, can you read? I am. I'm back. Okay. Acts seven fifty one. Acts seven fifty one. Fifty one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sharon, can you read? Give me a thumbs up if you can read, Sharon. Okay. Second Corinthians three fourteen. Arun, can you read now? Give me a thumbs up. Arun. Yes. No. No. Better. He has no, he has the English Bible there. Okay. Ephesians 4 18. Jerry, John 15 22. Beatrice, Matthew 15 14. Christy, John 1 14. And Sherry's John 15 5. Okay. So, Beatrice, John 1, 11, 4. All right, Jack, verse, or chapter 11, verse 4. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Amen. Amen. So let us resist when people are sick to see how we can serve to glorify God. To glorify God. And then verse 5, Jesus is still with us. He promised he will never leave us or forsake us. Jerry, Hebrews 13, 5. On mute. Hebrews 13, verse 5. Just hold on a minute. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because the Lord has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. The Lord has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Does he keep his promises, people? Yes. Is yes. his word the truth, people? Yes. yes. Can we depend and trust his word that if he said it, he will do it? Yes. I yes. mean, think about how many people who tell you they're going to do something and they never do it. <laughs> but our Lord, when he said he's going to do something, he does it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 
You are Lord who we can trust and depend upon that your word is, is, is true. Yep, you will never leave us. You know, and next week, Friday, what day is next week, Friday, people? Good Friday. Good Friday when we will remember the crucifixion on the cross. And a lot of churches will have services and people will be singing at the cross and Amazing Grace and all these hymns for Easter hymns. We got to, we know now. Can you put yourself in the position of his disciples and his mother and Mary and all his friends on that day when they saw him die on the cross? They most of them are it's over. Oh my God, it's over. He is gone. But we know what a blessing that we are, were born into this time. We know that he rose again on the third day. And so we therefore we can conclude with, with confidence that the cross, the crucifixion on the cross was not the end of, but the beginning of Christianity. If Jesus did not die on the cross, you and me would have no hope for salvation. He died on the cross for our sins. He took our sins upon himself. And his last three words on the cross were, it is finished, paid in full. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Paid in full. So, in verse 6 and 7, Jesus made clay. Why do you think he made clay? And he just didn't tell the man, you're healed. Why did he go through that process? What, what was he trying to remind us of? We're from dust. And dirt. We're from, amen, amen. He was reminding dust to dust, right? Ashes, he took dust and formed man in the beginning. So now he's reminding, he's restoring this man to the original creation. With what? The dust and the clay. He has a reason for everything he does, people. Every little thing. We just have to look for it. And, and we're going to find it. We find what we look for. So for this man and for us, it's a renewal. Restoration of the original creation. Perfect. No blindness. And then um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Christy, I gave you that. On mute. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and birthed into his nerlet the birth of light, and the man became became a living being. Out of the dust, and the man became a living being. Now he's taking the dust. And this man, we will learn, is going to see. The man, when Jesus told him, go and wash. Did the man say, what? Just like that? No, he didn't question. And you see, that's another lesson for us. When Jesus tells us to do something, go in faith and trust. What is impossible with man is possible with God. He told the man just went and did exactly what Jesus told him and he received his sight. Reverend Joseph, would you read Mark 5.34, please? Yes, Jed. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. Go in peace, your faith. We have so much evidence of people's faith. This woman was sick for 12 years with a, ble a bleeding disease and she just touched his garment and, and was healed. Touched his garment and was healed. This man was blind from birth. And when Jesus did what he did and told him to go and wash, he did not question, he went. People, brothers, my brothers and sisters, when Jesus tells us to do something, do it. Without question, without doubt, he will never put us in a situation and will not equip us to, do, to deal with it. No matter what it is, that's our Lord, our shepherd. Believe it. 
and be confident about it and walk in peace and confident the Lord is with me who can be against you Beatrice before you get you leave tomorrow morning read Psalm 27 and Psalm 23 I like on my salvation you so you know it yeah so no stress my dear no concern because the Lord goes with you yep when we do what Jesus tells us to do, miracles happen. And Mona, pray, Father, Father, strengthen our faith. Strengthen our faith. We get what we ask for. We get what we ask for. Strengthen our faith. Any thoughts? Anybody need stronger faith right now? Anybody um, going through a situation that you need stronger faith? Um, yes, yeah, yeah, Sherry. Yes, I said all the time, Lincoln. Well, we need all the time, every day, yeah. So in verses 8 to 12, this man, oh my goodness, this man spoke up and told the people that he is the man. The action. He, he, who is this the man who was blind because they saw him when he was blind. Now they're seeing this man walking around and dancing and jumping and rejoicing. And wait a minute, who is this guy? Is this the same guy? And then he said, yes, I am the man who was blind. So what do you tell people about yourself? What do you tell people about yourself? Other than your name. <laughs> we ever tell people, I am a believer. I am a Christian. What's your testimony? Why are you keeping it a secret? We need to speak up like this man and share the truth that Yes, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian. People want to talk to you. People are hungry for the word. Yes, a lot of people don't go to church, but they'll meet you in the street. They'll meet you in the, in the supermarket. There, there's no special place to share God's... All right, let me give you a specific example. I like to teach from experience and reality, and not just theory. Yesterday, I told you I went to the, to the doctor's office, to do my, get my physical done. The first nurse who came to see me, her name was Patience. She was a sweetheart, so kind, big smile on her face. She was the one who took my blood pressure and weighed me and all of that good thing. And then the word of the Lord, come, it's amazing how the God comes up in our conversation. And I said to her, Patience, I sense that you are a Christian. She said, yes. I said, me too. And everybody, those, some of you, most of you would know that I have these tickets, heaven tickets. Oh, how many of you got your heaven tickets? Not me, I'm surprised. Huh? I haven't gotten it. I'm very surprised. You haven't gotten it yet? Okay, next time you and I meet, uh, or I think I have your mailing address. I'll mail it to you. Yeah, I, the Lord put it in my heart many years ago to print these heaven tickets. On the front, it says heaven. On the back, it says admit one. So I said, here is your heaven ticket. Your ticket to heaven. Fully, All your reservations are already made. The only thing you don't know is the departure date and time. But you're booked. Now, I get into the room where you have to give the blood. And another wonderful young lady named Breelin. My daughter's name is Sabrina. We call her Bree. So I said, hey, can I call you Bree? She said, sure. That's how they call me at home. And again, the conversation led to Jesus. And she also got a ticket to heaven. And I got a big hug from her. You <laughs> see, be a light in the world. Don't hold back like this man. He did not. He did not keep a secret. I didn't know the guy. He didn't know who it was. 
He knew that his name was Jesus, but he didn't hold back to say, I am the man who was, was blind. I am the man who was blind. I don't, I am a Christian. You know, some people believe, believe it's not cool to be a Christian. And they kind of like a Christian in the closet kind of deal. This with the world need the, to hear the word of the Lord. And a lot of people don't go to church. They can hear it from you wherever you are. We need to share the word of the Lord. Some of you have been to my Sharing the Gospel workshop. I hope you have your handbook, your notes, and that you're reviewing it and practicing. When the Lord presents that opportunity for you to say, I am a Christian, let me tell you about Christianity. Let me tell you about Jesus. So, sorry about that, but I, I am so committed to helping my brothers and sisters, equipping them to share the word. To me, that's the most important thing that we can do for another person, another human being, introduce them to Jesus. Verse 13 and 14. These Pharisees, their whole intention was always to look for a way to trap Jesus, looking for reasons to judge him, to condemn him. He healed him blind man on the Sabbath. And he had done, and you know, they were so full of the tradition, and they was they were so hard-headed. Sharis, Acts 7, verse 51, please. <laughs> this is a pretty funny verse. I'm sorry. <laughs> That you stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. And he's telling them how they behave. Hard-headed, stiff-necked people, and there are people like that today. They don't want to hear anything. Don't tell me about Jesus. I don't want to hear anything about the church. They're all <laughs> hypocrites. And you know what a pastor once said? Yeah, we are all hypocrites. And we have room for one more. You're welcome. Yeah, we always have room for one more. All have, we learned in Romans 3, 28, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Nobody is perfect. Yeah. I love the question this guy in verse 16 asked him. How can a sinner do such miracles? People remember this. Evil cannot do good. Evil cannot do good. Evil can only do bad and evil. Evil cannot do good. Verse 17. The man is very consistent. He speaks up again and he said, he is a prophet. They will ask him, who is this man? Who can he told him, he is a prophet. And then the parents come into the picture. I love these parents. You know, they, they spoke what they knew and, and they told him, well, he's of age. He knows he's of age. Listen to what he, let him tell you, he's of age. Because they were a little afraid because in those days, if you said you would believe in Jesus Christ, you would be expelled from the temple, from the synagogue. That's why Nicodemus came at night to talk to Jesus. He didn't want to get expelled. And these Jews were judging Jesus based on their traditions that they had developed. So in verse 25, the man said, one thing I do know, one thing that I was blind and now I see, and this man healed me. Is there one thing that you know about Jesus that really stand out for you? Let's share. What's that one thing? that you know, that you have experienced. This is your time to share, to glorify Jesus. One thing. I know you know many things, but what comes to mind immediately? Come on, let's share. Has Jesus done, done anything for you in all your life? <laughs> okay, I, I will want to start. Thank you. So many things, but I would just say one thing. Yeah. One thing. When I call on Jesus or when I say my prayers, 
I find peace. Right? There's an instant peace. Mm. And I'm able to see things differently than what I saw before. There's no more, there's less confusion. Amen. Right? It's almost Amen. like medicine. Yeah. Go in peace, my dear. Tomorrow, go in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Yep. And all those who you talk to and touch. And okay. another thing, just one more thing. Okay. I don't only limit myself to a one-time prayer. I pray ever so often throughout the day. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Okay, next. I am not going to end this meeting until everybody share at least one thing. Be aware. <laughs> that yes. Basically, I born and brought uh, in Hindu background uh, up to my 20 age. Uh, I served by God uh, my age of 21. Uh, really, uh, God saved me. Uh, God has, has been doing many miracles in my mm. personal life and my ministry. God has called me uh, for his ministry. So uh, I have been doing the ministry for God. Really many miracles God has uh, doing in my life uh, and uh, ministry. Uh, so uh, yesterday, yesterday, uh, I and uh, my wife, uh, we, we, we were sl sleeping on bed. Suddenly, the sound uh, came uh, uh, in my kitchen. <laughs> uh, so my uh, Christy uh, got up and uh, saw, saw a big snake in the kitchen. Wow. Uh, really, we got afraid. So immediately, I go outside and uh, brought some uh, some man, and uh, they they came and caught the snake. Really, God saved me uh, from the snake. Uh, the, the, so God God is there. God is exist. So we saved. Praise to God that. Amen. Yesterday it was happened. Amen, amen, amen. He's our shepherd. He protects us. Thank you. Next. Come on, it's getting late, people. Let's go. <laughs> what is one thing you know about God? No. God guides and protects me at all times. At all times. Thank you, Sharon. At all times. Guides all and times. protects me. Every day. Yes, dear. Yes. Thank you. God bless you. Next. I feel like I feel the same way that, that the lady said earlier. Like when you, you pray, you feel a sense of calmness. It's almost as if you just um give those worries away and you just like yep. what whatever the outcome of this situation, it will still be probably for my good and for my benefit or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Sharice. Next. So I believe that, you know, this, as, as you quoted from Psalm 23, you know, that he is our shepherd. But even though I walk through the valley of the, or the darkest valley, he is always with me. And I've had several uh, experiences where I knew that the Lord was with me and protected me and kept me safe. And uh, as you know, we are living a, a kind of long life and we have to thank him for keeping us, you know, safe so that we are able to, you know, enjoy life, the life that he has given us. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. We have Christy on mute. I know he saved you from the snake. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Snakes is uh, six feet, more than six feet. Yeah, move. Wow. Uh, big, long. Uh, snake man came. Uh, the man saw this uh, snake long with in me. Mm. He told. <laughs> well, thank God. Long. Yeah. Yep. But God save us. 
<laughs> all the time. Arul? His grace is uh, all the time with us. Amen. Arul, unmute and tell us one thing that you know about God. Try to speak in English. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and you can interpret. Unmute. 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 Yes, Reverend Joseph can be a translator. That's what I just said. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes, yes. If he's not comfortable, it's okay. Yeah. For me, one thing I know is when I ask the Lord and I pray, he will answer. He never ignores me. He will answer. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says not now. In a little while. And his answer is always good for me, for my benefit, no matter what it is. And he's always there. He will never leave me nor forsake me. He's like my counselor. I, When I am confused and don't know, I go to him. I don't understand what's going on. Help me, Lord. Help me to understand what's going on. Help me to accept this situation because you are in control. So, be aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life 24-7, even while you're sleeping. He is there. And if a snake comes in your house, he will wake you up to go and get it. Get rid of it. Amen? In verse 28 to 33, what is more important? Where he came from or the miracles he did? And the teachings he shared. What do you think is more important? The miracles. Yeah, and the teachings. The Pharisees and they were more for concern. You know, what could come out of Nazareth? They were kind of. We know he came from God. How do we know? Um, verse thirty-one to thirty-three. Sh Sharice, would you read verse thirty-one to thirty-three again for us? Oh Lord, hold on, I have to go back. Oops. Sorry to surprise you, but it's okay. I have to go just go back. You know, I have to find spaces in this. It's 10, 31 to 33. Same, same no. to 9, verse 31 to 33. Sorry, here we go. Um, we know that God does not listen to sinners, He listens to the godly person who does His will. Nobody has ever heard of the opening of the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. Highlight that verse in your Bible. If this man was not from God, he could do nothing. If, if, when we have God in us, and with us, we can do anything that he tells us to do when we have him in us. So the blind man is preaching the truth. There is so much evidence and proof that Jesus is God. So much. He took how many loaves of bread and two fish and feed 5,000? How many? You remember? Two and five. Four, five loaves and two fish. Yeah. yeah. And feed 5,000 people. Remember Lazarus? He said... You know, somebody once said, and this is so true, that when Jesus stood in front of the tomb of Lazarus and called and said, Lazarus, come forth. If he had only said, come forth, all the people who died in that cemetery would have risen and come forth. He said, yeah. Lazarus, come, come forth. Yep. In verse 35 to 38, Jesus seeks the outcast and restores the fate of the outcast. God is a God of restoration. And the question we always have to ask ourselves, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus? I want to invite you tonight. 
to reaffirm your faith in Jesus Christ by joining me in repeating the Apostles' Creed. If you don't know it, you can repeat it after me. And I would encourage you, if you don't know it by heart, that you learn this creed. This is like the foundation of our faith. Repeat after me. Unmute everybody. Unmute. I believe in God the Father Almighty. I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth. Make of heaven. Make of heaven. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. And in Jesus Christ, Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary. Born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate. And suffered under Pontius Pilate. Was crucified, dead, and buried. Was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. He descended, he descended into, hell. into hell. On the third day, he rose from the dead. On, On the third, third day, he rose from, from the dead. dead. He ascended into heaven. He, he ascended, ascended into heaven. And sat at on the right hand of God the Father. And sit at the right hand of God the Father. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the Holy, Holy Catholic, Catholic Church. Church, the communion of saints, the communion, the communion of, of saints, sins. the forgiveness of sins, forgiveness forgiveness of sins. Of sins. the resurrection of the body, the the resurrection resurrection of the body. and the life everlasting, and the life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. 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 I want to Amen. clarify here when it says the Holy Catholic Church, it doesn't mean the Catholic religion. Catholic is whole worldwide. All churches. Wholesome. And that's why when we when we print it, we print it with a small C. Catholic. Catholic. Okay. So if you like a copy, and you can either Google it or send me an email and I'll send it to you. Okay. But uh, I strongly recommend that you learn this by heart, repeat it as often as possible. I love that with the church that I go to, we never leave a service without repeating, reaffirming our faith by repeating the apostles' creed, what I believe. Because what we believe is what's going to inspire us to act, take action, and what's going to inspire us to speak what we believe. We can't speak what we don't believe. We can't do what we don't believe about. So, verse 39. Spiritual blindness. You see, when Jesus was talking to this, he was talking about spiritual blindness, not physical blindness. Sharon, would you yes. read 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14 for us? Sure. Uh, and Jerry, look up Ephesians 4.18. But their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. Only in Christ. He's the one who opened our eyes, like he opened the eyes of this blind man, to see the truth, to be able to discern the truth, evil from good through Jesus Christ. And then Jerry, Ephesians 4.18. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. My dear brothers and sisters, we have the word this is what opens our eyes. This is the book of truth. Every word in this book is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Written by man, but inspired by the Holy Spirit. So, there is no more excuse for spiritual blindness for those who have heard the gospel message. Jerry, would you read John 15 verse 22 for us, please? 
Okay. 22. Yes, sir. John 15, verse 22. If I had not come and spoke unto them, they would not be guilty of sin. Now, however, they have no excuse for their sin. Mm. No excuse. We know the truth. Fortunately for us, our God is not a... a he would, if we confess our sins, because we are all sinners, He will forgive us if we genuinely confess our sins. He will forgive us. That's our hope. That's why he came. That's why we have Easter. Without Easter, we will be hopeless, condemned. But Easter is our hope. So as we sell, getting ready to celebrate, celebrate well, then talk about the blind leading the blind. Because there are people who claim that they know, but they really don't. They know what they think, you know, and they, they, they have false prophets. And Jesus told us, beware of false prophets. How do we know if somebody is teaching the false doctrine if we don't know the truth? That's why it's important for us to get to know the truth. Beatrice, Matthew 15, verse 14, please. Matthew 15, verse 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. And what's the ditch? Hell. Hell. Condemnation. Yep. So, fortunately for us, we have Jesus to lead us. And he knows all and sees all. Christy, would you read John 1 verse 14 for us? The word become flesh and made his dwelling among us. We, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and the truth. Amen. The word became flesh. That's why in communion we say, this is my body which was broken for you, eat ye all of it. This is what is feed on the word. Feed on the word. We need physical food, don't get me wrong. I like a good roti. Nobody laughing. <laughs> I did. <laughs> you know, I like a good meal, but the, I cannot neglect, I need the word more than the physical food. Too many people neglect, they spend two, three minutes a day with the word, and, but we need to spend more time in the word, get the word. We have Jesus to lead us. Thank you, Lord. So we must not depend on any human being. Too many people are putting, they worship the man and not God. And there are many prophets, preachers who glorify themselves and not Jesus. I will never go to a church where they don't read the Bible or preach from the Bible. That's my defining measurement of whether this preacher is from the Lord or not. And there are many who don't read the Bible, who don't preach from the Bible. So we must not, that's why we got to know. We have the opportunity to connect directly to the source, Jesus Christ. No other religion can connect directly to their God, like we Christians. Directly have a relationship with him. One of my favorite hymns is, what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. So, connect and stay connected. He said, he is the vine. We are the branches. That's where we get our spiritual nourishment from, from the vine. Cherise, John 15, 5. It says, John 15, 5, it says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. He that was source of strength or power, he provides everything for us. I am a total witness of that. 
a specimen of how he could he would equip his people. So what was the highlight of this study for you tonight? Well, I I actually admire the the blind man who was healed because he was a he gave a total testimony uh, throughout the chapter. I don't think we have seen that in any healing experiences before mm. or in any of the other gospel. And he stood up, he stood up for the Lord, and uh, how the Lord had you know healed him and all of that. And he, he bore witness to the fact that Jesus Christ is from God uh, and that mm. he was healed. Amen. You know? Yeah, I think he was an ex excellent witness. You know? Yep. That's, and we, need to, we need to take a, an example from him. Mm. None of us are blind, but there are things that Jesus do for us every day. The fact that you can leave your home in the morning and come back home safely is like a miracle, especially if you're living in a city like Atlanta. Right, Sirius? With eight Tell lanes on the highway. Yeah. Yeah, you know, even if a snake come in your house in the middle of the night, he will protect they have, you. They yeah. have snake in um, Atlanta. Huh? They have yes. snake in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. In my oh, yeah. House. Remember, I play golf. Diamondback. My house, I'm burning it down. <laughs> burning it down. <laughs> what, rattlers? <laughs> if any day come in my house, I burn my house down. I'm leaving and I'm never coming back. Yeah, I'm deadly. I'm a deadly afraid of snakes too. Me so too. Well, thank you for sharing, Jerry. Anybody else? What did this chapter, what does this word say to you tonight? Um, I looked at how the man was born blind, and Jesus said, but people thought that he his parents had sinned. Mm. But, um, people are born like that so God could show his works. That is, show his miracles and how he could make them better and how you could live. You know, you could survive. Amen. With those impediments. Amen. All right. Thank you. Anybody else would like to share one thing that you got out of tonight's study? Okay. Um, just to recap the main points. See, we are to seek out opportunities to serve and glorify Jesus. Seek it out. That's our role. Jesus, the, the great commission is go into all the world and preach the gospel. And I know the moment I open my eyes in the morning, I'm in the world. I'm in the world. Go. And then Jesus is always with us. Thank you, Lord. He will never leave us or forsake us. Friends will leave us. Our parents, my parents have passed away. I have older brothers and sisters who have passed away. Friends who no longer my friends. Wives who divorce me. But my God is always with me. He will never leave me nor forsake me. And again, the crucifixion was not the end, but the beginning of Christianity. To me, that was the defining moment in this chapter. The crucifixion was not the end, but the beginning of Christianity. We need to walk by faith. When we do what Jesus tells us to do, miracles happen. And then be a witness like this man. Share your faith. I am a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ. My, my name, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ. Be a witness. Eva, finish the statement for me. Eva does not do good. 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 Eva does not do good. Thank you. And Jesus came from God and is God. Jesus came from God and is God. Believe in Jesus and him only. Pray that the Lord will heal us from any spiritual blindness. 
Lord, open our eyes and heal us from any spiritual blindness. Beatrice, would you like to close us in prayer tonight? Okay. All right, let's close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight thanking you, Lord, for yet another week to read your word, Lord. We pray that it will stick in our hearts and we'll be able to use it and we'll come closer to you as the weeks and the months come. Lord Father, we thank you, Lord, for our families. We pray that you will heal us from any sicknesses, Lord, and fix all our problems, Lord. Be with us and guide us. Surround our homes with your angels, Lord. And Lord, what was what is wrong, Lord, you make it right. Lord, again, we thank you for saving us, Lord, and we pray that we'll all head for heaven when the day comes. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for all the food and the quiet and the peace, all of what surround us that can make us happy, Lord. And we pray that you will, you know, guard us against all evil. Be with us throughout the week. And Lord, speak to us as we, you know, get up in the morning and carry on with our daily lives. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please remember, amen. Um, we're going to be doing chapter 10 next Wednesday night. Same time, same place. But remember, on Thursday night at 11 o'clock Eastern time, I'm inviting you to join with me and let's go to the Garden of Gethsemane and be with Jesus and pray the prayer that he prayed. That's such a powerful prayer on Tuesday night. At Thursday, 11. Thursday 11. Thursday 11. at 11 p.m. Yes. Not, not tomorrow, next Thursday. Next Thursday, the 20th. Yeah, that's in the, if you read my messages, it's the 28th. Thursday, the 28th. I'm going to be... Keep sending the messages. It's going. It's in the verse. All of you get the verse for the day. It's in the verse for the day, every every day. So I need people. I don't want to. I don't like to force things on people. If you want to share, come and share. Let me know so I can add you to the guest list. What time will it start? Eleven. Eleven p.m. What are you doing a Zoom? Yeah. Add me to the list, babe. Thank you, Sharice. I'm going to add oh, you to the list. I will be in a service with 11 p.m. Okay. at night. All right. For me, we have a, a service. We call it a tenebrae service where we go through everything, including what happens and go on. Okay, well, tenebrae. you can make it. That's fine. Yeah, not at 11 in either. Thanks for, for letting us know. Anybody else? Should we said to, to add her to the, to the guest list? Anybody else? I know Evan Joseph to already told me he wants to be on the list. I'm I will be him. there. Beatrice, okay. All right. Have a good night. Have a good day, my friends, my brothers and sisters in India. I hope no, more snake, no more snake coming to your house, okay? Bye-bye. Thank you.